this is Pastor Trevor. We're getting ready to launch our next episode with you. And before we launch that episode, we've got something real new that we couldn't put in the episode, but we want you to see it now. For the first time ever in season three, we have an affiliate advertising partner, and that is slnt.com. And before we launch our show, in just a minute or so, we want to introduce you to them. You'll be finding out more about them this season. But right now, before we launch this incredible show, check out this advertisement from our new partners at slnt.com. You want to be a part of this, and then stay tuned for the next on the dock with Pastor Troy and the gang. Here we go. There are more than 8 billion phones in the world. A fact that threatens your privacy, security, and health. With silent pocket Faraday protection, you can regain control over your mobile devices. We get it. Privacy and security are inconvenient topics. And you may feel like you have nothing to hide, but the fact is that in the modern world, your laptop is never really off. Your phone emits a signal, even in airplane mode. And everything from your passport to your credit cards contains RFID. And all of it contains valuable private information that is easily exploited in the wrong hands. Silent Pocket offers a range of products you already use. Wallets, bags, travel gear, laptop sleeves, key cases. But with the added protection of our patented Faraday technology, which turns your devices invisible and safe from the outside world. Many industries, from top business professionals to government officials, require the use of Faraday products for the day-to-day -day security of them and their staff. They understand that we are constantly at risk and take the necessary steps to prevent future attacks. We offer this elite technology to anyone that values their personal data, and we are proud to offer a premium range that fits seamlessly into your everyday life, providing security without looking like a tinfoil hat. As we learn to live with technology, Silent Pocket stands on the three pillars of privacy, security, and health. Our goal is to provide harmony with mobile technology without risking our most valuable information. We hope you'll trust us to help you do the same. every Tuesday and Thursday. I was just looking up at Otis Redding's disc on the wall, that gold disc. You know, it's a platinum disc. You know, it's not gold. That's been sold so much. Two minutes, 36 seconds on the Dock of the Bay. That's our version of it. Greatest music of all time. Cool song. I guess it could be gold plated or something. Yeah. And don't really say like, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's supposed to play, supposedly. The, um, huh. That song, yeah. one verse song with a bridge. I went the course and that's it. And some mm -hmm. whistling. Whistling should have been verse two. Someday we'll hear it. Someday. On the doc.org, every Tuesday and Thursday, we're trying to help you get there. Uh, we want to get you off of this dock, but not till after this show, out of the shallows and into the deep. And um, hey, when you finish up, maybe we'll get a chance to hear verse two of Otis Redding. The Lord will let us hear it someday. Hopefully Otis is up there and he played himself. He's probably played it a million times up there. Yeah, he's probably he's probably here like every week. He's like he's like it's like probably getting old of it now. Yeah, you know? got, they got show club. <laughs> they got the Otis <laughs> Redding Show Club in heaven. Busy night. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to hear it. Somebody said, "Best said, well, what if he's not up there?" I said, "Well, the Lord will be able to play it as it would have been." So the Lord says He gives huh. you the desires of your heart. One of those I want to hear verse two. <laughs> I want to know what was the whistles going to be replaced with. We'll find out. Go find us out. Hey, if we find out, we will tell you. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, Roku, and Rumble, Sermonet. How will we do that? Well, I mean, we'll get it out. We'll put it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter if we find out. We have uh, on the dock following. We have a posse out there. They're, they're not going to be here anymore. Well, I'll, 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 I'll send a note back to Donna. You know, I'll say, you know, Lord, Angel, get one of the angels. Go tell Donna. Maybe the missing mic fluff was something to do with that. Yes, yeah, so it was Otis saying <laughs> it's coming. Yes, yeah, so we we lost one of our mic fluffs in one of our episodes, and we we found it where it shouldn't have been. Now 
Rick, Donna's husband, came in and kind of gave us a plausible explanation of where it could very have been logical. hiding. Yeah, very logical. He's logical. You know, plumbers are logical. You know, stuff goes down. Yeah. Pressure we, goes we down. We all tried to make a big mystery of it. Water but. flows downhill, folks. <laughs> Rick is very logical. Very logical. No, Rick's a great man of faith, too. He yeah. would, he would well, believe no, miracles. Yes, but, but he said, I think this could happen. I think it's a really... What I, he, think it's I think probably I think what it's probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You noticed that last episode that your your seat was softer because probably was in the seat. You know, maybe. You yeah, know. probably so. Uh, so go check us out. Hit subscribe, like, notify, tell others about our show. Go to my Patreon, download the app, my Patreon on your Apple or Google Store, and if you would do that, you could become a partner at four levels of partnership, three levels of sponsorship. Yeah, they're the the teams working, the crack teams working on a challenge here. So go check that out. We'd love to have you at my Patreon and be that partner or sponsor. So join us for that. There's lots of ways, lots of buy-ins. You can just get five bucks a month and be a partner of the program. We'll send you one of these incredible cups here, right here. See on the dock. Oh, I covered the logo. Shouldn't do that branding on the dock. We'd love to have you. And, um, you know, if you get up there and you want to become a show sponsor, you got a business organization or you got a ministry, um, we'd love to have you as a sponsor and there's different levels there. And, um, whether we mention you, talk about you, we even got levels where we'll do a show or series with you and uh, we'll make sure we, we plug you well. We want to help the those of you that are serving the Lord in Christian businesses, organizations, ministries. We want to help you uh, do great things for the glory of God. We want to hear about that. So go to my Patreon, be a part of us that way. You can go to onthedoc.org and find out about all of our uh, video platforms, audio platforms. You can link there. You can email us at info at on the doc.org. We'll talk to you about that. And you got on the show today, of course, myself and I got my lovely wife, Mother Beth. Mother Beth, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, we're doing, well, I'm doing pretty good. We're, we're, we've been shooting today. It's our third show today. We just tell you, we kind of shoot in stacks and we're always a little loose on the third show today. Did you guys get that problem fixed over there? I mean, it was... Lucas left us. He's in training, and he's now got these. These young birds are flying, and did something just hang up? Yeah. We just, I, to be honest with you, I've never seen that do that. I what? saw if you were watching the Telegram, we had our our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, our lower third graphic just kind of they sh they go up and they fade out and they magically come in, they go out, and it was just there and there and there and there. That was the Lord. It's back. Doo -dee -doo -dee. It, oh, I put it back just to show. Oh, you put it back. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, look, you. you Maybe it was up there to tell you that you're to get involved today. That's right. That's it. it was there to tell you yep. to that reach out, to hit like, and go go be a part of our team there. Yep. You know, do it was stuff. Giving with you it. time to you know you can use your subscribe to every single one. You can take our show and you can copy our stuff and you can put it out on your Instagram. You know, you can link people on Instagram to our show. Use your Instagram. We we want to get more of you on Instagram, Twitter, Telegram. No, I'm stuck up. Oh, there I'm stuck on yeah. this side. No, you're stuck. I got you up permanently. Oh. Here. Uh, then we got we got we got our brother Colt with us here around the table. Hello, Colt Tech Ninja. He Thank you. Tech, he Thanks for well. having me. Yeah, he's uh he's doing a great job here. And we got Donna over in the booth this episode. She's our executive producer over there. She is in the light. She's in the gospel light. Let it shine. Let it shine. We got Donna up on the board there, and we got her right there. Look, we got light. This is a new light. We had it for like three episodes today. It's just, it's changed our world. Yep. That we, It's like a whole new set over there. And before, we just kind of had kind of, kind of a CD little section. And they would they would pop in, but you could barely know who they were. And now Donna's got a presence. Cole, you had a good presence over there, too. Gosh, Thank you. Addison finds out about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Of one of the things that we, we, we've, we've done on one show, just for the record, we have put somebody there and stuck a mic and a camera back that way and just had a little, we had to have five, rather than put five at the table. We don't have enough mics. Those are our problem. We need to get it. So we, we typically lose that mic, go over here and bring them in that way. So Who did you do that with? Uh, McEwen. McEwen came in one day and sat and down. that's and said, why we need Patreon subscribers. Uh, yes. If you I were. A, over there there and, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can. over there and yell. We really need to buy time. a couple more mics. But I think is our mixer board didn't have another spot, right? I don't think so. Yeah. So we'll have to. You need to be on my Patreon. Like, like go up a level. Wherever you're at, go up a level. And get but mixer. We need a little bit bigger mixer. What we we were talking about, we need like a six channel so we could add a mic. This is designed to be a set too. We haven't used. We've never used this to do a full show. Maybe when I do the um, next series, uh, when I start doing some of the pastor invites, building a stronger church series or resistance, maybe we'll do an episode or two over here on the other scene. 
and we could, when I have a dialogue with one of the pastors, we'll do one of those. The I've uh, sat over there and like yelled in my, yeah, most people life. have to yell over to us and we just tell you about it. So we do have, it's like a peanut gallery. Sometimes they come in, <laughs> we'll take that. But we always thought it'd be cool to be able to reverse the camera and put a mic over there and we could put a boom mic. When we go over here, we use booms. Yeah. These will go on boom. So building a strong, stronger church series. We're talking about shop stuff right now. You can tell us the third show, the resistance, the rise of the church. We are in the part five episode of that. And, and we're calling this the mother church, Jerusalem. But in this episode, we're going to talk about who's your daddy. Oh no. Who's your daddy. They got that mic with the bass going. I love Sounds it. Good. I love it. I love it. Who's your daddy. Who's your daddy. You're starting to sound creepy. I know. My my, my daughter <laughs> Megan wrote us. We showed her the fire from the bonfire the other night. We had the church, and we have a picture of Ker- Kerwin in pictures front of it. Like that, I wish you could pop them up when you talk about. I, them. I actually can. Um, I I've already created it. I don't know what kind of trouble I will cause to do this. Let me see here. Oh. Okay, okay. I'm going to do it anyway because I'm going to try it. So everybody, stand by at home. Stand by at home. Everybody, please stand by. Uh, this is going to be risky. Um, we can blow the show up. We, I've never gone <laughs> to, yes, I've oh, never yeah. gone to another PowerPoint while I've been operating in this. Of course, it's going to be harder than that. Let me think here. Okay, 46W. Okay, it's going to be right here. I'm coming up. I love the sound effects. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'm almost there. I'm, I had to go to a whole nother. Okay, <laughs> boom. Uh, it was literally planes that were just diverting their course. We're, we're at the end of a runway. We are the only thing at the end of a runway of a major airport, and they were having to swerve hard because the heat was affecting their bumpy. They had a oh, bumpy honey. landing. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was bad. And that's Kerwin in front of it. Last year, they came to the fire, and they said, we told him it was going to be the biggest fire ever, and they said it was a, his daughter said it was a sissy fire. So this year, we made them light it, and we didn't light What happens last year, we lit it before they got here, so it, the good stuff had burnt down. But we made sure this year was extra special. This and needs a, a an audio that says "Man make fire." Man make fire, and he used it, he lit it with a flamethrower. So that was the beginning. We had a lot, good crowd around it. It was too hot; you couldn't get anywhere near it for a long time. And we had to have two other mini fires. We had two little mini, like little outdoor fires, so you could cook the hot dogs and marshmallows because you can't get close enough to that. That will burn you alive right there. That fire is serious. And uh, matter of fact, I one of the kids, one of the guys I like in the church. Uh, uh, King, was it Kingston? Kingston and I went over and I said, dude, let's go see how close we can get and how long we can, who can stay the longest is the man. So me and Kingston, <laughs> I think he's 13 or 14. We went over there and I thought, I had a hat on so I could have stayed longest. I said, I'm going to be fair to you, so I'm going to take my hat off. We looked at each other in about 12 seconds and said, we need to get out of this thing. <laughs> so it was too hot. All right, did I do a so good job? Megan, you were talking about, you were going to say. Megan, saw, we sent pictures to this to Megan and she says, Dad, church is kind of looking cultish there. <laughs> All right, I'm switching programs back. Stand by. We're going to try something that's never been tried before. I'm switching programs in the middle of a show. I'm coming back. Here Boy, we go. Lucas Lee is in Who's your of- daddy? Hey, I did it. I've never so. done that before. I already I, I already had it ready. That was a that was a, <laughs> right there. That was an on the dock first. You just saw it right here. And Lucas wasn't here to Lucas see. wasn't here to stop us. Yeah, yeah. That's I like, what I like that more. He, like he's that the more. executive director. He'd be like, no, don't do it. <laughs> he left too bad. We will persevere. We will persevere. We're fine. We're getting ready to go in this episode. Who's your daddy? Part part five. <laughs> so, yeah, part five. Part five. Part five. Almost, yeah, part five. Part five. And uh, we're going to get into it and we're going to talk about the mother church or something, but we're going to look at the other side, not the motherhood this time. We're going to look at the dad behind the church. We're going to look at the bridegroom. We're going to look about at, at, at the God part. We're going to take a look at that. So let's see if we can get into that a little bit with our incredible crack team here. All right. Let me see if I can find the first one here. I got to I gotta go. This threw me off going to do this kind of My stuff. elbows are getting tired. Your elbows are getting tired. <laughs> yeah, I always sit here all kind of hunched up, you know. I found it. All right. You're as descendants of the children of God, as as we are descendants of the mother church, we are byproducts of the Acts prototype church. You know, they, they, they spread out and eventually the gospel got to me and Colt and Beth and Donna and everybody listening that calls themselves a faithful follower of Christ, a, a Christian tribe member, a believer on Jesus Christ. We become children of God, children of the church of Jesus Christ, descendants 
of the mother church. We are the progeny. You like that big word progeny, the progeny of something very special. And that's what I want to look at the speciality of us. It all sounds very UFO-ish. I know, I know. It's because you, you got that in your mind right now. It's because of that sound effects. <laughs> the, the, the progeny, we, we always look at the progeny of being a part of the church, the history of the church. But we, but we forget to look at, yeah, we are a part of that original Acts church, but we're also a part of the family of God. So, so let's take a look at that. So we have been looking at the mom. Now let's digress. I don't know if it's digress, that's not the word, but we're going to go back further and and look at the head of the church, the titular head, the titular is the leader, head of the church, the father. Like superhero sagas always have backstories. I wanted to take a Sunday back in the day, and I preached this on a Sunday. I preached this probably around Pentecost, so you can go back in probably May, June at Community Faith Church. I, I went in depth on this for about three weeks, so this was not a one Sunday message. It was a three-part message that went on and on and on. I think it went actually five parts, A, B, C, D, and E, because it was just it got more developed and more developed. We won't do that to you today, but we're going to give you kind of a, a piece of it, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. But go watch the more in-depth four or five-week message and uh, do that. If you want to cut to the last one, you probably get a summary and then you get the big stuff. So check that out. But we, we took a look at who our dad was, Abba, our father. The word early on was Abba. Jesus prayed Abba, which means dad, father. So the, I want to start by busting some myths, myth busters. That's another kind of one of those, you know, shows that are kind of not spooky, but what do you call it? Kind of like alienish. Mythbusters. Not Mythbusters. Well, they Mythbusters buff- was scientific. Oh, that's right. They did science. They did experiments and things. They yeah. were awesome. They, they were awesome. They did silly stuff. And what did you say? What did you? I said that's another one of those kind of eerie things where another cultist were going to bust myths. Oh, oh myth no, busters. that's not. Okay. That was scientific. I don't know. First myth to bust. Let's do the first scientific thing. God is a killjoy. Most people think God is just a killjoy. And he's at at best, if he's not a killjoy, at best he's detached. He's busy. He's maybe we talk about one of us like maybe he's napping, and we don't. Some of us think he naps. Some of us think Lucas thinks he naps. I'm with Lucas. I think God takes a nap. I think he plays around to golf. I don't know what he uses as clubs, but I think he's got planets. And you know, wh- why do you think Saturn has a ring about it? Y'all are it's a ridiculous. hole. It, it's, he uses the ring as a whole. <laughs> if you hit Saturn in the hole, you get two points. You know, I, if we're talking planets, we've got to bring up Pluto. If yes, Where's Pluto that? is a yep. planet. Yes. some people say it's not a planet; it's a dwarf planet. It is a it's planet. That was the golf ball he couldn't find. I he think find God can go. find everything. I think if God wants to golf, He will. If He wants to nap, He will. God does what He wants to do. When Who he knows wants to do it? Golf could be. He could be down here walking around golfing today on the planet. That'd be cool. You gotta be careful. He came down and walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. Why can't he come down and play play a play a round of golf with somebody today? And, and you would just think it's some old man. But what if what if it's not George Burns? What if George Burns is God? And why does God have to be an old man? Why couldn't he be a young young buck? He could be a young buck. I mean, but I, I think God's going to be deceptive. I don't think he's going to look like, uh, what's that dude that played Thor that dropped down in the movie way back? And we went, oh, you know, even I went, oh. Is that a Hemsworth? Oh, Hemsworth, everybody yeah. Everybody went, oh. Yeah. It's bad when you're sitting next to your wife and Hemsworth jumps in the first time he's Thor and he lands. And she goes, oh. And I was like, honey. <laughs> honey. And then she said, well, you oh, said, oh, honey. too. I said, yeah. man, he's tough to compete with. I said, oh. And Josh was there, too. Josh <laughs> we are like, oh. Josh said, I said, oh, too. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't look quite the same by the time he's done the seventh issue of Thor. No, no, the one where he's fat and they had to recondition him. He got the beer guy. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> the first, God is a killjoy oh, at at. A lot of people think God just wants to just ruin everybody's time, you know. No. Uh, and, and some people think he's detached, so he doesn't really care. He's he's playing golf. He's he's on another set of planets. And at worst, he's an abusive master. He just created a bunch of rules that are no fun because you can't do this, can't do that, no this, no that. You know, so he's that. The second, and I don't tell you that is not true. And I'm going to get to how I can prove that's not true in, in a minute. We're going to bust that myth as we talk today. The second myth we're going to bust is that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which are one, are there to be our great sugar daddy. That is not true. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are one, but they're not there to be our great sugar daddy. And some people think sugar daddy at best, and worse, they think God is there to be their personal assistant. 
God is my personal bellhop, my personal butler, and he should do what I need him to do when I need him to do it. And so we, there's a, th those are two things that I see happening inside the ethos of a lot of churches, ethos of a lot of Christians, is our ethos of a lot of people that choose not to be a Christian. They think, oh, I don't want to be a Christian. That's boring. Or let me wait till I get all my fun. After I get my fun out of me, then I'll join the church. Because then it's like, oh, nah, we have fun, man. The bonfire tonight, we about burn everybody alive. That was a blast. <laughs> Yeah, we we set that thing on fire. We were about burning planes down, you know. <sighs> you know, you can have fun and be a Jesus lover. I'm just telling you right now. So we're gonna break those. We're gonna break those things down. See, the enemy is a great deceiver, and that's why I want to bust these myths first about who our dad is. The enemy is the great deceiver, and it, it, it and it's about who our daddy is that he's trying so hard to deceive us. He wants us to to ignore God or think God's abusive or he doesn't really care. So why would you waste time talking to him? He's, he's on Pluto. He's trying to figure out he's God, up there. Like a little mouse. Yeah. He's on Pluto Running around the room. Yeah. She's, she had to go get, she, she, they get to move. They get to move. We don't get to move. I know. Yeah. Although Luke, you got Colt got to go help her during the thing. That's cool too. I like that. So, so he's trying so hard to deceive us. The devil is, and he does that by, by creating those detachments. And if you just knew, but we're going to show you that. But if you knew, you wouldn't be deceived who really God is. And that's what we're going to try to uncover. But the world is regularly being deceived about who our God is and just how great his love is for us. And we're going to really get in that. Uh, I, I, I've said off and on, if you go listen to the series, one of the things I quoted the most is a lot of us treat Jesus like a coach. He's like a life coach. He's going to be my life coach. He's going to, he's going to show me how to get more stuff and, and how to be uh, wealthier and, and, and have more friends. And, and I guess God can, Jesus can teach you things that will Im improve your life. Don't get me wrong. But what he is, is your savior and he's your Lord and he's your King of Kings. So start with that perspective and everything else is, is just a bonus. Yes, he can coach and improve your life, but but understand this is the Lord of the universe. This is the King of Kings. This is the Logos, the Word that became flesh, and the one that will return and in the battle of all battles with simply the Bible says in Revelations, Matthew says this with his presence and a word from his mouth. So we're talking about a serious. This guy's gonna got a sword coming from his mouth that just slays nations and uh, brings in the kingdom age. So, so many of us treat him like that life coach. And, and, and I think, I think if you look at it, a lot of us treat him like he's again, a killjoy, an abusive master, a bellhop, a lucky rabbit's foot. God, he'll help. Well, gosh, God, God, you gotta help me now. I know I haven't seen you like ever, but you gotta help me right now. I need you. Oh Lord Jesus. I need you. Um, or a life coach, the world people, many people today, young, old, all kinds think that our God, I think they see God as being kind of archaic, like an old drag on the party. Like if, if, if God shows up, we can't have any fun, you know, we can't look, this show starts with Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. I had a few people tell me that you can't do that for a podcast. So it's a Christian podcast. You can't have Otis Redding opening your show up. I said, well, why can't I? What's wrong with the song? You know, he's wasting time rolling away, you know, I mean, what do you think God's doing today? God doesn't have to work. He just thinks about it. He's up there. You know, he's probably sitting with Otis <laughs> listening to verse two right now. Oh gosh, honey. I mean, I mean, you, just because you know, Jesus doesn't mean you can't enjoy an Otis Redding song, but vote music. Right. I mean, you can have a life. People have tricked us thinking I can't be a Christian because it's a drag. You're out of touch. Uh, God's past this prime. God's old relic. You know, God's not woke. God, God never went to sleep, according to some of you. He, you know, sleep. you know, and it's level two. Yeah, it's level two. And he needs. And, and some people think, well, we could fix God. You know, if we could just get God to quit using capitals in his texting. I think it says <laughs> in the in the Bible somewhere God doesn't sleep. I'm sure he neither pretty, sleeps or slumbers. I'm pretty sure he neither that. sleeps or slumbers. Yeah, there you go. He just cat naps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what we do here. Uh, uh, so what we're talking about is the God of the Bible. Let's take a, take a look at a man that spent Imano et Dios, a man to God, Imanos et Dios, a man that spent time man to God, 
I think if we could see the guy that's been man to God, let's see what his impression was of who God is. Like, cause have you, have, have you seen God? I've experienced God. I have, I've, I've had, I had a presence of Jesus sit by me in a car when I got saved, but I haven't seen God. I'm, I'm not like Ezekiel or Revel or John. I haven't seen the cherubim. I can imagine it and I read their stuff and I think, whoa, you know, but I haven't seen the spirit of God. Have you? If you have <laughs> social media, <laughs> please tell us it right. Send it to you know, tell us about it. We want to hear about it. I mean, there are people that have experienced the presence of God. There are people who've had visions of God. There, there are people that have had encounters with God. There are people that have near death experiences and met Jesus in that near death and come back and told about it. So, so don't get me wrong about that. I, th I think you can do that. We want to hear about it. Tell us that if you have. But what what I want to say, I want to talk to a man that met him, lived to tell about it, and. The Bible says that that God Himself did this man's funeral. God God Himself did this man's funeral, and so I want to take a look at that. So let's spend a little time with that man that knew God really. Let's look at what we really have, though, as we as we as we get ready to do that. Um, our, our God is very 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 unique. Let's take a look at Exodus chapter nineteen, verses one through twenty. Exactly, uh, New Living Translation. After two months. After the Israelites left Egypt, this is when Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, and he let them go. They arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. They had crossed the sea already. They broke up camp at Rephidim. They came to the wilderness of Sinai. The Sinai time is where they would come and officially be organized into the um, kind of the Mosaic covenant people. And they set up a camp there at the base of the Mount Sinai. Then verse 3, Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called him. Uh, called him from the mountain and said, give these instructions to the family of God, announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. He, he had destroyed the whole army in the, in the seas when they crashed over him. You know how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And he, he goes on to say in verse five, now if you obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the people that on earth for all the earth belongs to me. Who's he talking to? He's talking about Israel, He's talking about the family, the tribes, but the tribes no longer just 12 kids, families. There are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that had gone down to Egypt for 400 years and blown up. You know, there was, there, there, this was a nation now, not a family. This is not um, uh, Jacob's family. This is Jacob's family, but it's, it's Jacob's nation, you know. Right. And you will be my kingdom of priests. Verse 6, my holy nation, this is the message you must give to the people of Israel. You know, Israel says that they're the people of God, and, and nations around them want to destroy them. They didn't call themselves this. This is what God said about them. He said, you are my people. He chose them. Verse 7, so Moses returned to the mountain, called together the elders of the people, and told them everything the Lord had commanded him, and all the people responded, quote, 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 all the people. We will do everything the Lord has commanded, end quote. They're going to do everything that God's asked of them. So Moses brought the people's answer back to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, quote, I will come back to you in a thick cloud, Moses. So the people will see themselves and can hear me. In other words, I'm going to come to you in front of them. I'm going to do a cloud because if not, their eyes would all burn out because I'm holy. But I'm going to put a cloud. I'm going to have like a cloud. And I'm going to talk to you face to face in the tent of meetings. That's not the tabernacle. It's not built yet. And I'm going to let them see that I deal with you. You the man. I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses said, so the people can hear the, hear me when I speak with you, then they will always trust you. <laughs> How'd that turn out? Yeah. Moses told the people, the Lord, what the people had said. Listen to this. Then the Lord told Moses, go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes. Two days of getting ready. It's like us getting ready for the holidays. We're having to clean the houses, vacuum the room, do the dusting. You know, everybody's got to get the house ready. Consecrating the house. Thanksgiving's coming, you know? Yeah. Consecrate them today and tomorrow and have them wash their clothes. Be sure that they are ready on the third day. For on the day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai as all the people watch. Mark off a boundary all around the mountain. Warn the people. Warn the people. Be careful. Do not go up on the mountain or even touch its boundaries. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. God is not fooling around here, is he? Nope. No hand may touch the person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, stone them or shoot them with arrows. Ouch. If your goat goes across, put him down, you know. Shoot them with arrows. They must be put to death. However, when the ram's horn sounds, a long blast, then the people can go up the mountain. There's like a, the game's over, and then they can go in, you know. 
It's like going on the field after the football game. You can't get on the game down the field, but after the game you can. However, when the ram's horn sounds, a long blast people can go up on the mountain, verse 14. So Moses went down to the people. He consecrated them for worship, and they washed their clothes. He told them, get ready for the third day, and they had to abstain from having oh, sexual relationships. They had to, I mean, it was just, it was ended. Verse 16, on the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed and a dense cloud came down on the mountain and there was a long loud blast from a ram's horn and all the people trembled moses led them out from the camp to meet with god and they stood at the foot of the mountain and all of mount sinai was covered with smoke because the lord had descended on it in the form of fire the smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a brick kennel and the whole mountain shook violently as the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God thundered his reply. The Lord came down on top of the mountain of Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. That, that's our text. I just want you to think about this. The Lord came down on the top of the Mount Sinai, called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses goes into the smoke, into the fire, up the mountain to see God. Now, I want you to think about this just, just for a second. Moses walks into the fire. <laughs> I mean, I, I got the fire we showed. I got close to it the other day. I didn't walk into it. I mean, I got about 12 feet from it, and me and Kingston, we lasted less than 12 seconds because it was burning us. And, and you do not have the thought when it's burning you, keep stepping closer. You have, you have the thought, get farther away. We quickly went away from it. We both agreed we tied and that we decided that our manhood was secure being farther from the fire. So that young man, I didn't even feel like I needed to beat him that day. I just thought we needed to escape the fire. Yeah. So, I mean, Moses walks into the fire. Yep. When you walk into the fire, everybody around there is like, yep, he's done. That's it. Nice, nice seeing Moses. He walks in the fire. Nice knowing that guy. Yeah, yeah. nice knowing you. That guy's crazy. Can you imagine that? that dude's crazy, man? Who walks into God's presence like that? I mean, that's I mean, that's that's crazy. You imagine that directed by Michael Bay? Oh gosh, like the Transformer guy that does that. Yeah, the cool music. It would have been cool like that. I've got, I've I, got. Hey, I've got. Hey, hey, hey. Here you go. Sorry. I got a picture. I got, I got, I got another one. Boom. That would have been so cool. I mean, yeah, Michael Bay. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Almost just unfathom, yeah. unfathomable. I forgot I had that picture. Didn't they Go take? Ahead. Did they take a census of how many people that was? There were a was lot. Six hundred thousand. They had already. Yeah, they counted somewhere right in there, either before, right after that. Right. And whatever it is, when they have to die in the wilderness because they they failed. Right. There's almost exactly the same amount of people. It's funny. They populated enough of the next generation. That when, when God killed the first one off, there was the same amount of people to go in. Well, that scripture that said, and all the people said, what did they say? We will obey what the we Lord We will said. obey everything that the Lord has commanded. That's 600,000 people saying that in unison. Yeah, and they lied. And they lied. And they lied. They failed, except for Joshua oh, and Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I... I okay. God kind of worked Moses up to that. Yeah, but but he went in. He trusted God. He went into that. No, I'm they, saying he kind of worked him up. To yeah, the he started with a little fire in a bush, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're thinking there. That's yeah. I was thinking the same thing, too. He'd been around that fire before. Yeah. He knew that God was safe. He didn't know to take those shoes off, though. He was gaining some resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he was building strength. He was walking into it. Uh, we need a drop mic boom. for, for that's stuff good. Yeah. that Colt says. Because if you think that's about what... it, Moses spent a lot of years on the backside of that wilderness hanging out with God and Egypt's getting to know God. pretty hot, though, too. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty hot, hot place. Moses was a man, though, that walked into the fire because I think uh, what, what really was important to him is he wanted to know God and he wanted to see God and he wanted to please God. Yeah. And he wanted to see who was going to lead them. Because actually he said, "Can I, I need to see you. How do I tell him who's going to lead me if I don't see you guys? Well, okay, I'll let you see me, but you know, you, you, you know, it's limited. You can only later on. You can just see the backside. You know, you see, you can't see all of me because if you saw all my glory, you got to come be with me permanently. See ya. You know, see ya. Um, don't you know what everybody's thinking? They were thinking, I wonder what God's going to say to this guy. He goes into the fire. He goes on the hill, and people are like, what are they going to talk about? 
What are they doing there? We we were watching the NFL last night. It was a great game last night. I'm gonna date that. I'm gonna date this. It was Denver versus uh, the Buffalo Bills, and the Buffalo Bills lost. I don't like the Buffalo Bills anyway, so they lost to Denver. Well, who Denver was. Do you like besides the Steelers? I don't like anybody but the Steelers. I never hear you say the name <laughs> of any team. I like Without any th- the words. I don't like them. I like a team that's playing a Steelers AFC team that beats them <laughs> for that day only. So, Wait a minute. oh, okay, yeah. If it goes in our benefit, if it goes in our benefit, I like them for the day. Got it. Like, like, like Seattle was playing the Ravens. They lost. I hate Seattle now. Right. But if Seattle had won against the Ravens, you would have liked them for that well because we'd be in first place. I'd like them for a day. Yeah. When we play Seattle at the end of the season, I'm going to hate them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Uh, do you know, everybody's thinking, I wonder what he's going to say to him. Because I, what I was thinking yesterday in the game, I saw this dude get jacked. He got he got hit hard. And they had to kind of walk him over the sideline. And they had this new quick pop-up blue tent that pops up. It just it, It's laid flat. It goes, whoop, it pops up. It's called the concussion pro- protocol tent. It just pops up. And then they walk him in that tent, and everybody goes, they're taking him in the blue tent. <laughs> they usually didn't have a blue tent. They just take him on the th- sideline, and they go, how many fingers? And they go, oh, two, four, five, you know, two, four, five. You know how they, hey, you know, what's your name? Oh, my name was, oh, I'm Batman. No, you're George. <laughs> you, know, you know, so they got to where there was a lot of pressure because the coach was like, you can go play. Tell them you can go play. Tell the doctor you don't really have a ring. And they had, that's, no, you're not seeing stars. <laughs> you know, so they created the concussion protocol tent. The tent can go up. They go in there with an independent doctor and then they have to answer questions and they have to do a baseline ahead of time. So somewhere in the preseason, they asked them about 20 questions. They have to go in this tent and they start asking them these 20 questions or they ask them to perform certain things, tasks, yes. and they judge. Now you think, well, I can't count backwards. <laughs> well, if you couldn't count backwards before the season, they'll know you can't count backwards after the season. They judge you based on your baseline. So they have the notes on your baseline. Then they judge you based on what you do. And they want to see how you score against your baseline. If you can't score against your baseline, then they rate how bad your your, your concussion is. And if it hits a couple things bad, they're going to like, you're out for a game. And you're in what they call concussion protocol until you can pass that test. That's how they do it. But they had to get a tent so the coach couldn't be pressuring you while you were in there. And they couldn't see you doing it. <laughs> and it, it was kind of privacy. Moses goes into the concussion protocol tent. And everybody wants to go, what's he saying in there? I think that's the case. And 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 the, the folks, God could have said anything. Don't you agree? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, anything. He's God. He, how do you stop him from saying what he wants to say? I mean, God, God can say whatever he wants to say. You know, what does God say? Well, God first hides him. God himself passes by him and reveals himself to him. And to be honest, um, I mean, he had the right to be angry because the people, God already knew the people were going to fail at what they said they were going to do. He could have been advanced angry. Y'all are going to let me down, you know. He could have been a killjoy. He could have been a bellhop. He could have been all those things I said before. He could have been, well, I don't care. I'm done with you guys. I'm moving on to a new clan. You know, I'm bored with y'all. Be like our kids today. I'm bored with this. I need a new one. You know, God could have moved on, but he didn't do that. Um, in this incredible story, we learn what happens. Now, and let me give you a little backstory, and, and this will help. In, in Exodus 21, we read 19 today. Um, in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments are given. So while God's in this happening, he gets the Ten Commandments. Okay. The first set, the original, the OG. Right. The OG don't make it. They get broken. Wow. He has to go back up and get another set. Because why? The people screw up before he gets off the hill on the first 40 days. The people that said, we'll do everything. He went into the mountain, the fire, and he disappeared. He didn't come back. They're like, dude, I mean. You he, think they thought he died or something? They don't know where he went. But Joshua, you know, yeah, yeah I don't know, maybe. In Exodus 21 through 23, the rest of the covenants get. So he's getting stuff. I mean, were they mad because, like, God's keeping us out here? It's God. If he asks you to stay, you stay. You stay. Yeah, yeah you stay. I, Exodus 24, the Israels, later on, uh, he, he actually came back out of that, and then he goes back up. He actually comes out of this fire pretty quick. Then he goes back up and gets the Ten Commandments, okay, on another journey. It's on that one where he's gone 40 days and 40 nights, and it's while they're gone on that one that that um, they mess up. Uh, in Exodus 21 through 23, the rest of the covenant's given. Exodus 24, let me get, I, I'm behind on the slides here. Exodus 24, uh, the Israels accept the covenant. They go, we will follow these rules, 
So the people accept it over here, but over here they say we'll follow the rules again. So there's like a it's like a double acceptance. In 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 25 through 31, on the mountain of God on those 40 days and 40 nights, the plan for the ark and the tabernacle is given. How they'll build the ark, how they'll build the tabernacle, which is the the precursor to the temple. So the tabernacle was the temple before the was rock. It was right. portable. And the priesthood is selected. How you'll pick the people that will be my priest, okay? The the Aaronic priests and the Levites uh, who will be a part of that. And the craftsmen, they, he names the craftsmen who will make the gowns, and he names the people who are skilled. So God knows by name the specific names of the, of the people that can do stuff, you know? He's got them by name. They're names in the Bible. So God knows you by name. He knows what your skills are, and he can call you out when he needs you. And Exodus 32, he comes down with the commandments in hand to find that in the 40 days they had magically, they don't know how all their gold had been donated together. And Aaron had magically built a half golden calf pagan idol and they were worshiping it. And Aaron says, when Moses says, what is happening brother? He says, I don't know. He just took his gold. We stuck it in the fire and out from the fire magically came this calf and the people made me do it. I just, <sighs> it was a rave. They had a rave. They were going nuts. Ta-da. Exodus 33. <laughs> I mean, the end of Exodus 32, God was going to wipe them all. He said, Moses, stand away from them. I'm killing them all. You know, they always say in the Marines, they say, when you get in the battle, they say, kill them all, let God sort them out. God said, hold my Coke. Yeah. <laughs> hold my God. yeah. God said, hold, hold my Coke. So, so in the Marines, they say, kill them all, let God sort them out. What do you do if God says, move aside, Moses, I'm killing them all. There's no sorting them out. Just get, God, out, of the way. get, out, <laughs> just of get way. out of the way. Get out of the way. Moses didn't get out of the way. He said, God, you can't do this. You did all this stuff to get me out of the wilderness and get these people out. And you did all these miracle signs. If you get out here and you kill these people, then everybody that's left is going to go, God is terrible. He killed the people. And God's like, yeah, but they deserve it. Moses is going like, but they'll think you're not a, the God you are. I know. Moses says, I know the God you are. I've spent time with you. So it's a just a big test for Moses. So I think it's a test for God, too. I think God's like. Yeah, but it's, yeah. A, it's a leadership and a, a heart test for Moses. I never thought about it that way before, but yeah, it's a big test for so, him. So Moses says, God, give us another chance. And, and, and yeah, God says, okay, get everybody. Now he makes, he, there's disease comes on the camp. He makes them grind the gold up. You know, there, there, there's makes them eat, drink it, drink eat. it. There's a there, there's sickness that comes on the camp. There, there's everything. So, so God makes them pay the price, and 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 He tells them. I mean, He tells them what, what He's going to do. And but then God says, "Okay, verse twelve, Exodus thirty three. One day Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. Moses is saying, God, you, you want me to take you, but you have told me, I know your a name and I will look favorably on you. And if it's true that you look favorably on me, let me know your way so I can understand you more fully and continually. Moses says, God, I need to know you more. Um, I'm going to lead these people. These are some tough people, but I need to know you. And the Lord replied, I'll personally go with you, Moses. Originally, uh, Moses said, all right, I'm not going to kill you. Prior to this, these 12 verses in front of this, Moses said, God said to Moses, all right, I'm not going to kill the people. No, give me, hey, Donna, give me my Coke back. I'm not going to kill these people, but I'm not going with you. I'm disgusted. And then Moses <laughs> said, if you're not going, I'm not going. And God says, well, if you're not going and you're going to leave these people here, then I guess I'll go with you, but I'm going to stay far away. Moses said, no, I need to know you. I'll lead. And I'll separate the two from you, but I got to know who you are because I got to represent. And and that's what this is, is representation. Verse 14, the Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Boy, they, boy these guys are your mono I mean, yeah, they it's a, a big leadership trial. Yeah. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. And how will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people, if you don't go with us for your presence among us sets us your people up and me apart from all other people. It's the presence of God in us and with us as the church and as the people of God that sets us apart from every other people in the world, from every other religion. It's not what you do in your religion, Buddhism, Islam, whatever cult you're in. 
it, it's the presence of God in your life active is what sets us apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Moses said, you can't set us without you because without you, we're not your people. We're your people when you're with us. That's true for us today as the church. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about the rise of the church, you can't be the church without God. And that's why so many churches today are trying to live out a faith that disincludes God's holiness principles. You cannot go be the church. God won't hang out with that. He'll say, hold my Coke while I finish you off or hold my Coke while I don't bless you anymore and you quit existing. So these churches, so many churches are doing that. They're leaving God. They're dwindling down to nothing. I mean, these denominations that have quit preaching the gospel and quit living the gospel, I mean, they are just failing left and right. And you, where you're seeing renaissances where churches are leaving forming new churches or independent churches are formed. But, you know, the gospel will move. The Lord replied to Moses, verse 17, I will indeed do what you've asked. The Lord was reasonable here. He said, Moses, that's reasonable. We'll do that. I'll look favorably upon you, and I know you by name. Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. I want you to catch that part. Show me your glorious presence. And the Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I'll call out my name, Yahweh, before you, and I will show you, show mercy to anyone I choose mercy, and I will show compassion to anyone I show compassion. And he does. And now when we get to 34, we get ready for that moment of compassion. Then the Lord tells Moses, we're going to give these 10 commandments one more time. You've talked me into going with you. Now, interesting, God cut the first rocks, but you notice that God doesn't cut the second. God writes on the second, but he tells Moses, you cut them yourself. I cut one for you. Repentance means you have to pay penance for what you did. you got to do restoration, restoration. You take something, you need to return it. You break something, you fix it. Is that like cutting your own switch? Yes, exactly. You go, you chisel those stones. Eh. That wouldn't have been easy to do that, but he he got him. Look, see, two stones like the ones. I mean, the Lord told Moses, chisel. Like, he didn't say kind of like like. You, I wonder how many times they had to do that to get them just like that. I will write on them the same words that were on the tables tablets you smashed. Be ready in the morning to climb up the mountain and present yourself to me on top of the mountain. No one else can come. In fact, no one is to appear anywhere on the mountain. Do not even let the flocks or herds gaze those near the mountain. Get, hey, get those arrows ready. We'll shoot them. I think I remember. So Moses chiseled out two tablets like the first ones early in the morning and climbed the mountain as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came in the cloud, listen to this, stood there with him, and he called out his name, Yahweh. The Lord called his own name, announced himself, I'm here, Yahweh. The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I'm slow to anger, filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. That's us. We're out there in a thousand generations. I forgive inequity, rebellion, and sin. Thank God. But I do not excuse the guilty. You got to chisel you some stones. You got to repent. You got you to make apology. You're not forgiven while you're still doing it. You got to quit doing it and apologize with your heart in mind. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren and the entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation. Moses immediately threw himself to the ground and worshiped, and he said, O Lord, if it's true that I have found favor with you, then please travel with us. Yes, this is a stubborn and rebellious people, but please forgive our iniquity. We are too a stubborn and, 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 and rebellious nation, the USA. But please forgive us, Lord, of our iniquity and our sins. Claim us as your own special possession. I pray that for us as well. Verse 10, the Lord replied, listen, I'm making a covenant with you in the presence of all your people. I'll perform miracles that I have never been performed anywhere in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people around you will see the power of the Lord. He's going to take the whole land. Canaan's going to be given to them. They're going to slay people. Jacob, Jericho's going to drop just in walls down. The awesome power will display for you. Remember, people were fearful before they even got there. But verse 11, listen carefully to everything I command you today. Then I will go ahead of you and drive out the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, uh, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But be very careful never to make a treaty with the people who live in the land where you're going. If you do, you will follow their evil ways and be trapped. They made so many treaties. They cut so many deals. Even when he told them at the very end of Jerusalem and said, don't go to Egypt, don't make a treaty. They went to Egypt, made a treaty. I mean, for hundreds of years, they just failed at this and failed at this. 
Verse 13, instead, you must break down their pagan altars, smash the sacred pillars, and cut down their asher bowls. In other words, nothing but me. You must worship no other gods, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, Elkanah in Hebrew, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. In other words, God loves us so much, he does not share us with anything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. He wants the first of your tithe, the first of your life, the first of your soul. Moses remained there on the mountain with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Hey, they had to wait 40 more days. He wanted to see one more time if those people behave themselves. And all that time, he ate no bread and drank no water. That's not humanly possible. So he was sustained by God's presence himself. And the Lord wrote the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments on the stones. And when Moses came down the mountain carrying the two stones, the tablets described of the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. Wow. I mean, I, I just want you to think about that. And, and I, I want to kind of get to the back part of this episode here. Because this is all this text I read you is a lot. But I need you to hear the story because this is a man, Hermano de Dios, went up on the hill. He talked to God himself in multiple conversations. He'd already done it on the backside of the wilderness. He'd already done it at the burning bush. Now he's with God. He's seen God get angry. He's seen God say, hold my coke while I destroy these people. He's been able to talk this God and to give him a second chance. He's gone up with the new tablets to get the second chance. And God's gone over the rules of what he wants for the people in the second chance. And God met him. And I, I just want you to understand. I'm going to show you the text again. In Exodus 34, verse 5 through 7, if you're out there. Exodus 34 verses 5 through 7. Go look that up yourself in your own Bible, in your own version, and understand it says the Lord announced himself. It doesn't say Gabriel, Michael, anybody else heralded him. It doesn't say somebody came and spoke, and, and like uh, John and Ezekiel, they saw someone on the throne, and it says the, the, the linen, man in linen came and spoke to him, or angel Lord spoke, and they saw. It says the Lord Yahweh himself spoke he says Yahweh Moses said I want to meet you and the Lord met him Imano Edios and and he says who he is and I broke this down so you can see it better but go read it yourself what does God the people want to know what God said check this out he's merciful who's your daddy he's merciful who's your daddy he's graceful who's your daddy he's slow to anger Who's your daddy? He's overflowing, abounding, and steadfast love for us, gracious and compassion. He's a God who even when we sin so much that he had to forgive, forgive us by sending his only begotten son, loved us enough to sacrifice his son to save us. This is the same God that myth number one that we started with in this series said, our God's a killjoy, detached at best, and an abusive master. Our God is maybe a sugar daddy or our personal bellhop. Nothing about this screams bellhop. Nothing really screams sugar daddy. He did provide for his people, very manna and, and stuff. They ate the same man. Guys, they ate manna 40 days, 40 nights. Now, I can't even see that happening. That would be rough on me too. But I have to be honest with you. I can't handle that. I need a little variety. But, and I know they boiled it, cooked it, grilled it. They did three things to it. So I know that. And back when I do like diets, when I just do, I'm going to eat this, I'll come up with 20,000 ways to cook it. All right. I think, but, I, I think I could put up with the meat coming out my nose. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they got, and they got quail. They didn't gave him quail. Yeah. yeah. Lots of quail. They, they uh, but what's interesting is my grandfather, Don, he's 102 this Thursday, November 16th. I'm dating the episode, but I want you to know this 102. He eats the same thing every morning for breakfast for as long as I've known him. Yep. He eats a piece of apple. He has a piece of orange. He has a half a banana. He has some grapes. And then he has oatmeal. And milk. And milk. Drinks more milk. I bought him two and a half gallons of milk. He's down to half a gallon right now at the beginning of last week. Yep. One week he drank two. Why do you think he's 102 and still able to walk and goes up and down stairs? Doesn't even turn the lights on in his house. Yep. Hadn't broke any hips. Nothing. When you're drinking two and a half gallons of milk a day, or two and a half gallons of 
week. And he's already eating oatmeal. He's got great heart health. He's, I mean, fantastic. I mean, I mean, he eats oatmeal every day. Yep. Every single day. Every single day. He has the lunch that senior citizens bring him. Him, thank you for doing that, senior citizens. And then he eats for dinner soup yep. every can of soup. Sometimes we bring him KFC. If I'm going by, I'll bring him something special. We'll bring him. He likes a Wendy's hamburger here and there. But it's the same thing. I say, what do you want? Uh, Joe Spaghetti. What do you want? McDonald's hamburger. What do you want? Uh, KFC. Yeah. That, that, that's his range. And then what, what, what soup do you want? I really like the vegetable beef. Can What's something different this week? No, I like the vegetable beef. I got all kinds of others I bought him. And he'll eat the vegetable beef. When, when my grandpa's gone, we're all going to take all the other soups and leave. I think we'll put the other soups together. I mean, I, I, I'll i buy him this fancy, like, the chicken dumpling one, Progresso. No, I really just like the vegetable. And which one? Campbell's. Campbell's. I buy him the thick hearty. That's a little too thick. And, and what does he eat with it? Crackers. Saltine crackers. Then he has hot chocolate. He likes there you he go. does a little hot chocolate quick and he eats ice cream. Like I love ice cream. Bowl ice cream every night. Yeah. Every day. <sighs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even fathom it. Well, that oatmeal is keeping him regular. No, yeah. you darn right it is. Benetones can are regular. Now, I have to say, I got on a, a grilled cheese binge for a couple of weeks. Grilled cheese, not oatmeal. <laughs> every single day I had a grilled cheese. Guys, Gary, I'm, when Gary lived at our house, he ate eggs like you wouldn't believe. Him. I have yeah. never seen anybody eat so many eggs. I have eggs every morning. You have eggs? Well, it's, oh, eight, it's either eggs. He could eat or twelve to twenty right. a day. Yeah. He could eat twelve no, to twenty he would a day. Eat them oh every meal. God. Every meal. It was just Whoa. we bought a case of eggs and, and we we'd be buying a case of eggs a week. And there was other food available. I mean, he, he was welcome eggs. to eat I mean, anything. Hey, some we people had, just like eggs. I he mean, liked eggs. He. Come in and cook them up. So listen, guys, back to the story. Sorry. These guys go up the mountain, <laughs> and we're going to wrap up the episode here. But he, they go up the mountain, they wonder what he says. What does God say? He says, I'm merciful, graceful, slow to anger, overflowing and abounding in steadfast love for us, gracious and compassionate. And what has he showed to us all over all these years? All, all of those. That. All, the, all that. He should have wiped those people out lots of times. And us but too. he didn't. But he doesn't. And, you know, I thought that was one of the interesting things that we learned when we watched that um that one series about the, the uh, ah, you know, the article Erd about the Muslims, yeah, um, and their view of of Allah. And yeah, he's very compassionate. He, yeah. No, well, no, their view of Allah is very tough and strict. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, they, yeah, he is. He's very precise and expects a lot and and, and demanding and without any mercy. Yes. So it's very difficult. That's why they s sacrifice their lives to get s to, to be martyrs because it's guaranteed entrance into heaven. The other way is almost impossible to pass the rules. So now I'm thinking, why would you? I don't, I don't know. Well, they like the discipline. People want, that's why, why do you think the Mosaic Law was passed? Because people wanted a way to get in and God said, here, try the 666. It's not doable. Their way is not doable either. No. There's no way to be a good to a God that's great. What you have to do is, let the God that's great be a part of your life and and and, and, you. and know you're going to have points yeah. in your life where you're going to make mistakes and you're going to deal with those appropriately. Let, let me end with this in the series because I wanted you to hear, you've heard who the mother church is, but I want people to know our dad, our, our father is not a killjoy. He's not a bellhop. He, he's not abusive or anything like that. Uh, church, what I want to say to you on the doc listeners, our God is not angry either. I mean, he thinks about it at times, hold the Coke. We all do that. But but when Moses talked to him and he said, you know, you know, you're right. He's compassionate, merciful, graceful. He's not angry. He's the opposite. He's slow to anger. We need to start reflecting in our own dealing with other people the same kind of grace. Because a lot of times people in the church can be some of the harshest to each other. Uh, churches can treat each other with the harshness. They can be unforgiving of mistakes that we make, character flaws that we have. I'm not saying we should accept them ongoing, but when people really repent and their their marriages are broken, or they they make a, a character flaw mistake, or they they have an event that that, that 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 when they go through the process of of offering their life back to Christ and asking for forgiveness, our Father is compassionate. When Moses begged for mercy for his family, the tribe of Israel. He accepted it, and and he didn't just do it one time. He did it for king after king and prophet after prophet, and 
he did it for Jesus. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah and he went to the cross and he asked dad, would you forgive them? Cause they know not what they do. And Jesus became the once and for all sacrifice. Our, our, our father is amazing. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we can be heirs to that kingdom, his sons, his daughters. And Oh, like that old song says, Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me like no other lowercase uh, idol or demonic demigod can ever do that. Um, it's amazing what God has for us. We are, you are, and on the dock, all of us here, everybody in this set, everybody listening to the sound of my voice, you are, and I are, are beloved by God. I mean, he had a deep relationship with Moses, but Moses' relationship can be any of us with God in our own quiet time and our private time. God's capable of having a relationship with Moses and Beth and me and Colt. He liked Moses so much, he just kind of took him and buried him himself. He liked Elijah so, Elijah so much, he took him up. He liked Enoch so much, he took him up. I know people that when they have their quiet time, private time with God, it's so special they can't miss it. They get up early to, to be with God because it's such a special time. My reading of the word in the morning has gotten to be so special. I I get up earlier these days than I've ever have because I'm just looking forward to what he's going to say to me today. And as I get older, I'm tired. I'm working harder and I have less energy, but somehow I don't skimp on the mornings. It seems to be the mornings that are getting me through the rest of the day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So we are, you and I are, we are beloved of God. And the question is, do you accept this? Are you living like this? Do you know this? Do you, have you made the decision to consent and will you call God your father? Will you make Jesus Christ your savior, your father in heaven, your daddy in heaven? Um, hallowed be thy name. Um, he's got a kingdom that's going to come and his will is going to be done and it's going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. And we need to be forgiven of our sins and, and we need to be forgiven of the trespasses against others. And we need to keep ourselves out of temptation, but we're going to get there. So, Lord, when we do, lead us out of it and 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 lead us into the kingdom. And as we keep our eyes focused on God, he will get us there because he is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. The Lord's Prayer is a powerful prayer because it, it was Jesus' instructions for how we are to pray. He knew there's going to be other stuff, but put the Father front and center, you know. Your father in heaven is special. Different thought. I mean, when you think of who our daddy is, a lot of religion, a lot of Christianity, a lot of denominations, a lot of groups have gosh be God being very hard. The Muslims do, but but there are, I mean, Pentecostal sects, Islamic sects, not Islamic sects, but but uh, uh, apostolic sects. There are there are Catholic sects. There are there are Orthodox sects that have some very rigid views of God. And what you have to do to get God's forgiveness. Right. And really all you got to do is, is really be brokenhearted. Yeah. The Bible says, and I, I think it's Isaiah that he, that he, that he heals the brokenhearted mm -hmm. and he really does. And so I wanted you to get a look as we wrap up this resistance piece here today, we've been talking about, um, building a stronger church and, um, and I mean, let me, I'm in the wrong one here. We, this whole, class today is about who's your daddy and the rise of the church uh, and and to get the mother church you also got to know who your dad is and our dad in this case maybe some of us didn't have the best dads maybe we had issues with that but our dad in heaven is the perfect dad you can even if you couldn't rely on your dad here you have a daddy here that can fill in the gaps and you know moses we we never heard anything about his dad but we know who his father was. He had such a relationship that he talked him out of wiping us all out and giving us another chance. And here we are. It's amazing. As we come back in part six, uh, guys, we're going to kind of wrap up this series. It'll be good. Uh, we're going to kind of pull everything together and we're going to talk about that uh, original gangster the cult, the OG church, which is honestly the church that needs to be around today. The original church, no modifications. We just need to roll all this together. What the mother church looks like, uh, what the ax church is, who our dad is. And I think we need to re, I can have the word here that resembles, but maybe we need to begin to reassemble. Yeah. 
reassemble uh, what that church looks like, and we would see the rise of the church begin to grow again today. We call in the series The Rise of the Church because when, when we look back in time, the church was growing by thousands and thousands and thousands each day. We're not growing by thousands and thousands right now. And so maybe we should go back to what worked in the beginning and start through the process again. So that's what we're doing here at All the Duck. Any, any final thoughts or questions as we wrap up? I think it's been good. I think, Donnie, you've done a great job over there on board today. Thank you for your oh, yeah. leadership over there. Colt, thank you for yours today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for joining us out there. We'd love to hear your thoughts and processes about that. And you know, share with us on, on our different uh, platforms about your encounters with God, maybe your experience, or who you, if you've got a chance to have a vision or connection with God, share that with other people, lift them up. Uh, but know that your God is merciful and compassionate and full of mercy. And we serve a very special God. And And I'm going to go back to one slide here. I don't usually go back in slides as I wrap up here, but I want to I wanna do that. Our God is not angry. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He's graceful. He's not angry. Uh, he's, matter of fact, slow to anger. So let's represent that God to the nations, and let's be that kind of believers. Let's us also reflect those graces to be more merciful and compassionate and graceful to people, but hold people accountable to the Word of God and say what you mean and mean what you say, and hopefully we can do better than our Israelite brothers and sisters. We look down on them sometimes, but I find the church today is being pretty sloppy with a lot of things that God's put us in charge of. So come back and join us for part six, Building a Stronger Church. We'll be wrapping up that series in part six, Building a Church that resembles or maybe assembles the old G church. Again, the original gangster church. We want to we want to get that happening again and see the rise of the church in your community and our community. That's important. Go to onthedoc.org. Join us for uh, uh, information there, how to get to different uh viewing platforms. You can email us as well in, at info at on the doc.org. We'd love to have you. Also go to YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, check us out. And all on our auxiliary channels, Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet. We'd love to hear from you, your comments and your exchange. Share these shows out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Those are our five social media partners. Hit subscribe, like, and notify so you can tell other people about your experience and what's going on. And we'd love to have your feedback on the shows. Hit, hit something on the chat. Tell us about it. We'll take a look at it. Go to my Patreon, become one of our show partners or sponsors. Help us improve the show. Be a part of it as a partner or a sponsor. We'd love to have your business, your organization, your ministry uh, featured in the show. So go check that out. Three levels of sponsorship are available. Go to my Patreon, download the app, find on the dock, and you can read about that. Oh, most important, we want you to make sure you're in a church getting fed. And if you don't have a church home, we're in Southern Illinois, Marion. We'd love to have you join us 10 o'clock on Sundays, 6.30 on Wednesdays. Would that be okay, Beth, if they came? I think it would be okay. Okay. Uh, we'd love to have you at coftv.com. You can check us out on the church website. Uh, we broadcast out of a studio here, but we welcome you from any church, and we are out there praying for your church as well. We'd love to hear from you about what's going on in your place. If you're looking for a church in your region, but you're not in our region, uh, reach out to us through email, and we'll help you find a church home in your region. The most important thing is that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not have to perish but could have eternal life. That message is for you for me, for everyone, you have free will. Exercise your free will. Your father is full of compassion and mercy. Who's your daddy? He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm Pastor Troy, Mother Beth, Colt, and Donna on the set here. We'll see you back real soon. And we have enjoyed having you on the dock with us. Get out there. Get out past the pass. Go do the things of God.